East you, everyone. So there's a bit of a trend I'm seeing online, and I realize it happens very much in real life. Uh, I've referenced it in my Santa Rosa Creek Tribe video, uh, particularly Chief Dan Helms' Indian name, uh, Skyhorse, and how it doesn't really seem like it's derived from a Muskogee name of any sort, and how I, I believe it's a powwow name. And I have additional reason to believe that there is no actual ceremonials there, although I have someone who's viewing the channel who was invited to go to one of those events and uh, with Santa Rosa Creek Tribe. And I said, hey, whatever you find out, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know what kind of stuff they have. Because my other source is saying that there is, I have a friend of a friend who's saying that they have no ceremonial culture. It's all powwow stuff. And if that's the case, it's, it's just not the same. Like, it's not really, you know... And by ceremonials, I'm talking green corn, I'm talking Muskogee language, I'm talking Hilasaya, I'm talking that type of thing. You know, clans, who sits where at the brush arbors, all that type of stuff is, you know, a part of Muskogee culture. And even though I've not been to the ceremonial grounds myself, I know these things exist. And that they are definitely a part of the culture. And... You know, I would like to see. I like. I like to know if the Santa Rosa Creek Tribe has any of the stuff, or if it's all just powwow. So far, my impression seems to be verified. Um, if anyone can verify anything else, that would seem to contradict that verification. Then I would love to know because I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want to like you know mislead anybody as to any group or individual. All right, moving forward. But just in, in terms of the naming conventions, I want to bring that up now because I'm seeing online a lot of uh, people are using names that are really not based in Muskogee culture and saying, oh, this is my Indian name. Now, Edwin Marshall, God bless him, he's a nice, kind man, and he's, and he's very, very well-versed in Muskogee culture in terms of ceremonial culture, I believe, and definitely, I think he was raised around, around both like Baptist Indian church, as well as ceremonial stuff. He, he's pretty fluent in the language. He knows a lot of things. And so I, I've, I've actually um, taken advantage of his knowledge in translating something into Muskogee that my great grandmother told my mom. And I used that on a purse for my cousin when she graduated uh, high school. And so it had a turtle clan emblem on it. And it said a certain verbiage that comes from the family line. So, um, I put it in English and Muskogee, uh, with, um, small, small letters stamped into the, into the leather. So anyways, um, but no, Edwin, if you're watching this, you're probably not, but in case you are, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm paying tribute to you because I appreciate everything you do. Now there's this woman, and I'm not going to say her name, even though the conversation is going to be kind of in the icon of this video, and I, I, I have to do that. I'm sorry. Edwin is a very kind man. I'm a little bit less kind when it comes to this stuff because I, I just... I feel like what's going on right now is perpetuating stereotypes. Not to sound like a victim, because I hate doing the whole, oh, I'm a victim of colonial violence, blah, blah, blah. I hate to do that sort of thing because... I think that colonialism, colonial thinking, colonial sources, colonial violence, all that, these words get misused a lot or overused. I should, both. Both. And kind of like racism is thrown around a lot. And, it, you know, it's losing its power because it's, it's being thrown around way too much and inaccurately at times. So it is losing power and that, and that needs to stop. So use these words sparingly and when appropriate. But that being said, when somebody is using names like Big Bear, Running Horse, and um, Skywater, Little River, and just kind of generic Native American-y type of names, and saying, this is my, this is my Native American name, right? It just kind of comes off as like you don't know anything about the culture, or people say, I respect Native American culture. Well, well, do you? I mean, do you know anything about it? I mean, not all cultures are the same. Not all languages are the same. Not all tribes like each other. They, they're kind of trying to nowadays because we're all Native and we're trying to have some solidarity, but 
that's a very modernistic approach. That's not how it used to be, okay? That approach is like maybe kind of 100 years old at best. Maybe a little bit over that, you know, um, at most, because we really, you know, didn't all like each other. Even in the same tribe, we didn't all agree with each other on things. I've covered that in some of my Muskogee history videos. So moving forward, this woman posts that, oh, how do you say, how do you say the name sacred spirit in Muskogee? That's my son's Indian name. I'm like, from the get go, I'm doing that. Because you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking Holy Spirit. I'm thinking this is gonna translate directly as Holy Spirit. How could this person not see this? That's what I'm thinking. And sure enough, I read uh, Edmund's response and he, he gives a, you know, he, 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 uh, he does in fact translate it into Muskogee, but then he also says that this is the Muskogee word for Holy Spirit. I think a person realized, oh crap. And I'm just like, how could you not see that? How could you really not see that that's, that that's exactly what you, your, your son's Indian name is? Your son's Indian name, which you didn't even know of in the language that you want it to be in, which you clearly didn't get it from because you didn't know the language. Your son's name is Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. How could you not see that coming from a mile away? sacred spirit what's another word for sacred holy what's another word for spirit ghost it's obvious now there are na- there are words that are being used as names today that I don't think were actually intended to be personal names back in the old days you will see I mean I was looking at the uh, Parson Abbott role and I saw I think it was like Yaha Hokti or something like that. Um, it, it would, that would translate as being like wolf woman. I think that's what I'm seeing because some of the names are phonetically written out and they're not really transcribed perfectly. And um, I think I've covered that concept in other videos on uh, Crete genealogy. So what's going on is Okay, so there's a place called Big Jim and Hokti's Bar and Grill in Wilika. And um, Hokti is the name of the woman. Hokti means woman in, in Muskogee. That's what the name, that's what the word actually means. And I don't think it's supposed to be an actual name. But some people are naming their kids Hokti, I guess. Just like Chaban. Well, I call my son Chabani because that means boy. Chaban is kind of like dude, guy, you know, hey man, like, you know, like in, in a, in a, you're one of us kind of, kind of way. Right. And, um, but Chaban doesn't, I mean, it's not like, you know, a traditional name. Um, it's more like a word. It's like, it's like a, a thing rather than a, a personal name. But then again, names are derived from personal thing or from, from things. But, you know, as far as, like, the traditional names, I don't know. I mean, you got some people that have traditional names from their childhood. Because if you're a man, your name might be, you know, as a boy, you might be Hadol Goji. Which would be, like, Little Wind. Now, my great-great-grandmother was in the household of a Hadol Goji as head of household. Probably an uncle or, or some other relative, I'm guessing. And it wasn't her mom's husband. Her mom's husband was Marbika. And they were also listed on that census in 1882. But uh, not my great-great-grandma because she wasn't born yet, contrary to the U.S. census. That's a different story, okay? But Hadol Kaji, that, that's, that's his name. But that sounds like not a, an adult name. It sounds more like a kid's name, like Little Wind, okay? And so, but some people never, maybe never got their adult names because if you're a man you have a a kid name you have an adult name if you become a warrior you get a war name if you become a chief you get a chief name and so you can get any number of names or you know any of those four type of names throughout your life 
Uh, but um, I don't think Chabon or Hokti are actually technically among those original names, but you know, people have used those names as a, almost like a nickname. And so they've kind of become names. And they are Muskogee words. But I don't think they're historical Muskogee names. They're now modern Muskogee names, if that makes sense. I'm kind of speculating. I'm going to continue to look at census records and see what I find, but I'm, I'm pretty sure those are not. I mean, I don't know. I'll double check. So don't quote me absolutely on that, but that's kind of what it looks like to me. But I'll do more research and verify that. But there are at least Muskogee words that you call a person, right? I call my son Shabani. I call him, uh, I've called him, you know, Hajoji, meaning you know, like little crazy or little excitable or whatever. And, um, I even call them Isti Chapkoji, like little long man, little Bigfoot. Bigfoot being the uh, uh, the American concept of what Isti Chapko is. Isti Chapko actually is that's a long man, but it looks like what we, what we perceive Bigfoot to look like. So, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I've just kind of called him Isti Chapkoji, but not not that often. Usually, I just call him Chibani. These are all Muskogee words, right? And, um, but I don't have an Indian name. My mom didn't give me one as a kid because she didn't really know the Muskogee language. I know a lot more Muskogee than she ever knew. And she actually was born and spent part of her childhood out there and actually knew her grandmother, my great grandmother, who would have known more stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, as far as like what, what name am I giving my son who's who's son of Turtle, he's not actually Turtle Clan. Like, if I had a, a, an Indian name as an adult, it probably would be something like Lochahajo, probably, because I'm Turtle Clan. But if, I'm, if we're using traditional names and traditional naming conventions, which still exist. So, uh, I don't know, but like my son could hypothetically also get that name as well because, I mean, you can get a name based off your father's clan, even though you belong to your mother's clan. You could get a name based off of your father's clan. So just kind of something to think about. So my son could get the very name that I could also get. Even though that wouldn't likely be the case if we were active at the ceremonial grounds. So anyhow, I just, I want to see people kind of stop taking names that sound cool in English and saying, let's translate it into Muskogee. And then just, I'll give myself that name or I'll give my kid this name I, without having any idea, like, how it's likely to translate. Like, I mean, you named your kid Holy Ghost. That's, that's his Indian name. It's like, why don't you just go by his, his regular legal name because that's going to be maybe a little less taboo. It's like, do you want to name your kid God or Jesus Christ? And I'm not talking Jesus like a lot of Hispanics have. I'm talking, like, actually naming your kid literally Jesus Christ and saying, oh, yeah, this is, this is his Indian name. I mean, you know, that's, you know, if you're to say, oh yeah, I'm going to name my son, you know, God in Muskogee, it's going to come up as like, you know, Isagiranisi or, you know, um, Ofanga. And it's like, you're going to piss off people by doing that. You're going to be pissing off people that go to the ceremonial grounds. Like, I'm not going to call your kid that. That's, that's like calling, calling your son God. Your son's not God. So, I mean, that, that's the thing. And I just kind of want people to really think about that before giving themselves or their kids an Indian name. It sounds cool, but does not fit our naming conventions. Our naming conventions exist for a reason because of the historical clan and tribal town structures that have existed for, you know, at least centuries, at least centuries. And, um, they exist for a reason. So please, before you give your kid an Indian name, please think about the kind of message you want to give whoever speaks that language. Well, what message you want to give about you and your kid, especially you, though, since you gave the kid the name. And please, please do some research on the culture before you start giving out names because names are given a certain way for a certain reason in certain cultures. And even though names get recycled, like Locha Hachu gets recycled a lot, it, you know, it has. 
I, I have a, a Waxy Hajo ancestor who there's like three other guys in the same role with his name. And again, like three of them had the same age. One of them was 10 years older. Mine was one of the 35 year olds, one of the three 35 year olds. So names get recycled, but just be aware, please be aware of what you're doing when you're giving your kid an Indian name, a so-called Indian name. Respect yourself and your own culture up to actually do some research. I don't mean to be mean about this. Please do some research. And um, if you have any questions, I'll do the best I can to answer them. Reach out to Evan Marshall. He's really a great uh, great source, a great resource. And um, yeah, and hope you all have a great day. Uh, stay safe and stay dry this holiday season. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I don't get back to you before then. And uh, Mado for watching and uh, Adam Chi Chatlis.